So in this video, we're going to go through seven examples of drawing a force diagram. And in each situation, I'm going to ignore air resistance. OK, so just to be clear, we're modeling all of these without air resistance. So number one, a ball falling vertically to the ground. So here is my particle. Here is the ball and it is falling vertically to the ground. So what forces will be acting on it? Well, there'll be its weight. So its weight will act vertically downwards. And that's about it. OK, there's no air resistance. OK, so there's nothing trying to push it back upwards. There's no force acting upwards. Um, there's nothing pushing it side to side. It'll just be its weight acting vertically downwards. And that will be it. OK, now, question is, let's take a look at number two. I'm not going to erase it. Number two, a ball having been projected into the air at an angle. So we've thrown the ball, it's flying at an angle, and it's going to make a parabolic motion down to the ground and hit the ground. Okay. While it's in the air, uh, what forces are acting on the ball? Well, um, it's in the air. There's nothing currently pushing it along. Okay. So once it's left my hand, then, so if I was throwing this pen, once it's left my hand, then there's nothing now pushing it along, okay, apart from its own momentum. So there's no forces acting on it in this direction. There are no forces acting on it in that direction either because there's no air resistance. Uh, there's nothing uh, pushing it back up again. So this is the force diagram for number two as well. OK, so it doesn't matter if it's falling vertically to the ground or if it's been projected into the air at an angle. The force diagram would be the same. There's only one force acting on it, and that would be its weight. Right, number three. Well, a conker hanging vertically from a string. Well, if this is my conker, then it'll still have its weight acting vertically downwards. But... It's being held in place by a string, and there will be tension in the string. And so that is what my force diagram should look like. Now, number four, a weight is suspended um, by two strings, one at an angle of 30 degrees to the horizontal and one at an angle of 45 degrees to the horizontal. OK, well, here is my weight. Um, it's got the weight working vertically downwards. Um, one string acts at an angle of 30 degrees to the horizontal. So there will be a string and there will be tension in that string. And we'll call that T1. And it is acting at an angle of 30 degrees to the horizontal. The other string is acting at an angle of 45 degrees to the horizontal. So something like this. And we'll call that T2. So the tension in that string will be different to the tension in that string. And this angle is 45 degrees. OK. And it doesn't matter in this situation whether you've uh, got them the other way around. Um, that's perfectly fine. Right. Let's take a look at number five. A crate is pulled along a rough surface with a horizontal rope. OK, so here's my crate. Uh, there will be weight acting vertically downwards. The crate is in contact with a rough surface. So because it's in contact with the surface, there will be a normal reaction force acting vertically upwards. It's being pulled along a rough surface. so. That will be a rope, so the horizontal rope, and so that will be, uh, there'll be tension in the rope. And I've chosen going to the right as um, the direction of travel. You can equally uh, have it pointing to the left. And it's a rough surface, so there will be friction working against the direction of motion. And so this is my force diagram. This is identical to the force diagram we drew in the previous video where we were looking at uh, the book going across the rough tabletop. 
So same idea. Right, number six. A box slides down a smooth slope. So when I draw this force diagram, you don't actually need to draw the slope. Uh, but in order to visualise what's going on, I do think it helps. So here is the slope. Here is the box. Okay, or the particle that represents the box. Now, there will be the box's weight acting vertically downwards. Because it's in contact with a surface, the slope itself, there will be a normal reaction force. The normal reaction force has to act perpendicular to the point of contact. Okay, because because it's on that slope, then the normal reaction force has to be at right angles to the slope. Okay, we don't need to draw that right angle, but that's just to demonstrate it. Now it's a smooth uh, slope, so there's no force acting against the direction of motion, and so that's it. Okay, that would be my force diagram representing those two forces. Now. When we get onto slopes, um, which, to be clear, aren't in AS maths, um, when we get to slopes, uh, we will add more to our diagram than that, okay, to help us along the way. But this is just to show the force. These are the forces acting on that particle. Now, for number seven, um, a box is pulled up a rough slope by a rope parallel to the slope. So here's the slope. Here is the particle, so or the box. It will have its weight acting vertically downwards, just as we had in the previous example, and will have a normal reaction force acting perpendicular to the surface. It's being pulled up the, a rough slope, so there will be, oh, let's try that again. There will be a rope pulling it up the slope. There will be tension in that rope. And because it's a rough slope, friction will be acting in the direction opposite to the direction of the motion. So there'll be friction acting down the slope. And so that is the force diagram for number seven.